Hey, thanks for joining me today for episode 56 of Podcasting Your Brand. I'm your host, producer Jemmy, providing learning lessons for you to podcast your brand. And today I'm going to share a podcasting 101 topic, naming your podcast. This episode is brought to you by my own brand, Flintstone Media. Listen in and let's do this. So we're going to be turning our attention now from creating your content to marketing your content for audience growth. And that starts with the name of your show. Now, you may be thinking, Producer Jimmy, why wasn't this covered during the launch? Because there was a lot of other stuff (laughs) I needed to cover during the launch. And as you'll hear me talk about in this episode, you can change the name of your show. So I wanted to focus on the most important things for getting your show off on the right foot. But this episode is really applicable regardless on if you're starting a new podcast or you've been podcasting. So how do you come up with the name for your show? Well, I found over the years that the best approach is saying exactly what the show is. Family finance for the single parent or getting back up after being knocked down or Songbirds of the South. All of these are made up, by the way. So if any of these was the name of your show, you're welcome for the free publicity. But saying exactly what your show is, is really going to help your audience know exactly what your show is. But that does not mean that the name has to be blunt and boring. It can still be very clever and stand out. In fact, I think the best names sit at the intersection between being very matter of fact and being clever. And you should really try to aim for that. So think about what are some ideas that your ideal listener would resonate with? So here are a few examples of what I mean. And these are real shows (laughs) that I produced. And at least as far as the recording of this episode, they are all still in active production. But my favorite go-to example, favorite, 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 is a show on the Horse Radio Network where I'm the manager. So in horse culture, and I did not know this (laughs) going into work with them, but I know this and lots more about horses now. But apparently in horse culture... It's common to say or hear someone say that they will do the horses in the morning, meaning that they will muck the stalls and feed the horses and stuff like that. They'll do that stuff in the morning. They'll say, I've got to get up early to do the horses in the morning. Or can you help me out with the horses in the morning? (laughs) I think a little bit of an accent came out. (laughs) I don't know why, but they'll say stuff like that. So when coming up with Horse Radio Network's daily morning show, what do you think they called it? Horses in the morning. Yay, bravo. See, it's exactly what it is. It's a morning show about horses, but it's also clever because it's a common saying for their ideal listener. And another client of mine has a show about people who find themselves unexpectedly owning residential property. This is a problem I I, I wish I had. <laughs> they find themselves unexpectedly owning residential property and suddenly being a landlord overnight. This can happen because of a death in the family is an example. But whatever the reason, they didn't come into being a landlord intentionally and they need to catch up quick. What are the laws? How do we handle it? How do we deal with a tough tenant? What do we do in this situation, that situation, all that stuff. So what is that show called? Any guesses? (laughs) That show is called The Accidental Landlord. It's exactly what it is, but it's also clever in that the name really tells a story that someone who has accidentally become a landlord, they will immediately identify with it. Another example of a name being something that resonates with the ideal listener, but unlike horses in the morning is not a common phrase, is the original name of this show. In fact, it's a common phrase, but for something entirely different. (laughs) So originally the show was aimed at people who had a side hustle that they were passionate about and were building around their nine to five, often late at night from their bedroom. So what did I call that show? (laughs) Very cleverly, I called it Business 
in the bedroom, which of course is a bait and switch. But for the people who do have a business that they're building in their bedroom, it immediately resonates with them. I have heard so many times people say, oh my gosh, that's me. That's me. I knew it immediately was me. I'm building my business in the bedroom. So there you go. For what it's worth, that's another example. And sometimes alliteration can help with coming up with a clever title. Alliteration is essentially just a series of words in a row that start with the same sound. So for example, my old travel adventure show where my co-host Glenn actually same Glenn of Horses in the Morning, Horse Radio Network, <laughs> we would travel all over Florida doing really, really fun things to inspire both vacationers and staycationers to discover the often undiscovered fun things to do in Florida. And we called it, because the alliteration was so great, <laughs> we called it Finding Florida. But just a brief caveat on being clever. You can be too clever. <laughs> There is a fine line between cleverness and cheesiness. So don't be afraid to run your podcast name by a few people before you land on it. In fact, I would actually really, really, really recommend that you do that. <laughs> okay, so how do you, now that you know kind of what you want to go for, how do you figure that out? Again, it's the intersection between being matter of fact and being kind of conceptually clever, right? So you want to create two lists, one that's matter of fact and one that's conceptually clever. So the first list that you should come up with is one of common keywords used around your topic or used in the industry that you're targeting and anything else that is associated with your topic. So I'll keep this concept to a simple brainstorm for now. I'll be talking about this in a deeper dive on a future episode in order to relate it to the power of search engine optimization, but that is a whole other topic about keywords. So again, we're just keeping it to a simple brainstorm for now. So as an example, if I were doing a show on self-care, this is present of mine. I literally just did an interview <laughs> with my friend Julia Manfrey's show, Self-Care Solutions. So it's very top of mind. But if I were doing a show on self-care, then my keywords list might include such things as, duh, self-care, <laughs> but also maybe therapy or physical fitness, relaxation, stuff like that, mindfulness, those kinds of things. And then I want you to create a second list. On that other list, I want you to put together common phrases spoken, common sentiments that are shared. And things like that, all those kinds of phrases or ideas that are relevant to your target audience and their lifestyle. What is the essence of your messaging? So again, using my self-care podcast that doesn't exist as an example, I might come up with things like loneliness through grief or fighting depression as a single parent or finding work-life balance, or finding financial freedom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When someone is facing an issue that your show would help them solve, how might they express that issue in a Google search? And that's what should be on your list. Or if someone is an enthusiast for the subject matter of your show, what might they type into the search bar in their podcast player app? And all of that should be on your list too. So those two lists, one that's very matter of fact with some keywords and one that's more conceptually clever with common phrases and problems that you hope to solve. These lists will create very good brainstorming fodder and a good starting point for you to think of a great name for your show. And by the way, Keep that list of keywords. Keep it handy because, again, <laughs> I'll be talking about it in an upcoming episode. So don't let it go anywhere. Keep, and it should be a living list, anyways. You know, keep those two lists handy as more stuff comes to you. Add it in there. Sometimes it may end up just being, once you've landed on a name, those might just be great lists for future topics. <laughs> but, anyways, I digress. So when you find a name or a list of a few names that you like, the next step is to then do some due diligence to see if there's any reason 
not to use that name. So what I do for due diligence is first, I start with the low hanging fruit to check. I open up both Apple iTunes and Spotify, two of the largest podcasting platforms, and I search for the show name that I want to use. Super simple, right? Just search for it and see what comes up. If a ton of shows come up, then honestly, I would just stitch it. You don't want a name that is going to be way too tricky for a potential listener to figure out which one in this list of dozens is the one that they're actually trying to find your voice on. <laughs> in fact, I remember once, this is actually pretty recent, I thought I'd come up with the perfect name for a client show. And after looking it up, I realized there was no way we could use it. There literally were dozens of shows out there with that exact name. Just search for note to self <laughs> and you'll see what I mean. Search for note to self in your podcast player. And yeah, I would not recommend using that name if you're starting a new podcast. So if there's a lot, a lot, a lot of podcasts out there with that name, then just don't use it. If you do find there's already a podcast out there, but it's only like one or two with that exact name, then don't give up on the name quite yet. Tap into those shows to check if they're still active, if they're long defunct, <laughs> that there's really no issue, right? You can start a new show and chances are very unlikely someone will be confused when they find it. If they are still active, but very inconsistent or have really bad content or bad audio quality, then you can definitely still consider using the name. Just make sure that you are consistent, that you have great content, and that you have the best audio quality that you can manage with what you got. Just be better. <laughs> and the audience will figure it out, okay? Or if you find there's another show out there with the exact name, but it's in a completely different lane, serving an entirely different subject matter, then you can probably make do with using the name, no biggie. Because again, the audience, they'll figure it out. So as an example, one of the podcasts I listened to early on in my podcasting journey for tips and insights was the show put out by Libsyn, one of the leading podcast hosting companies, Liberated Syndication. And as they say, their podcast is the podcast to keep you podcasting. And it's still active, by the way, so it's working on themselves. <laughs> It's a great job, Lipson. <laughs> but it's named for the technical term of what holds all the information about your podcast. The thing that podcast players read to play your episodes, the RSS feed. So Lipson's show about podcasting is called The Feed. But guess what? <laughs> There's another show out there also called The Feed. And it discusses tech in relation to something completely different. Any guesses? I bet you can guess. <laughs> That's right. The other, the feed, is about food. <laughs> and both shows are still very active with great audiences. And when someone wants to find the show about podcasting and they hear a show on food, they know immediately they have the wrong show <laughs> and vice versa. So it hasn't really hurt them having the same name. But if there is another show, even if it's just one other show, and it's nailing it, they've been around forever. They've never missed a release date. They are super great as, as hosts and have solid value and great content. They sound fantastic. and They're doing all the things right. Then, yeah, <laughs> you should probably move on to the next name in your list. All right. So those are some checks that I make in the podcast player platforms. But additionally, aside from just searching on podcast platforms, also check how fully you can secure the branding around that name. The show is called Podcasting Your Brand, after all. So check if the URL is available. For example, I own podcastingyourbrand.com and it's really handy, especially in an audio consumption scenario, to be able to have an easily rememberable memorable, whatever the word is, <laughs> just call it vanity URL. That's what I usually say to have a vanity URL 
to point people to. So once you secure it, whether you build a website on that URL or if you have the vanity URL for to wherever your show lives, a landing page on your business website or the main platform that you're pushing, whatever it is, having that URL be the same as the name of your podcast can be very handy. And check for both the name and for the name plus the word podcast at the end to see if that may be available. So for example, findingflorida.com wasn't available when we started that show, but findingfloridapodcast.com was. So it checked the box. We counted it. We got it. And there's the website. (laughs) And also check if you can get that name as the handle on major social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Now, it's not the end of the world if the exact match is already taken, especially because you can probably just adjust it a little and still make it work. But if you can get the exact match on the major platforms, then that's a great bonus. And if you find that they're available, but you have zero interest in using that platform whatsoever, let's say like Instagram gives you highs for whatever reason, (laughs) still go ahead and snatch it up, okay? It is best to secure that handle for yourself, even if you have no plans to use it, because you never know if you'll suddenly become less allergic to Instagram and want to use it in the future. And in the meantime, having it keeps someone else from using it. And an additional note on due diligence, if you're a podcaster who's choosing to podcast in a language that is not your first native, most fluent language, or if you're choosing to highly target an audience of a specific language, then you may also want to run the name that you really like for your show by someone who is fluent in the language that you are going to be podcasting in or targeting. Take fair warning. (laughs) From the Chevy Nova, a car named with a Spanish word that means no go. So whether or not the legend is true that the sales did uh, Nova (laughs) well in Spanish speaking markets for that car because of the name, it's a cautionary tale. You don't want that kind of thing to happen to you. So then once you have found a really great name that you like that checks off enough boxes for you, just roll with it. Because what you don't want to do is to get so hung up on coming up with the perfect name that you're coming up with the name for a podcast you'll never actually start. (laughs) Don't let the name hang you up so much and just get started. And remember what I've told you before, your podcast is meant to be a journey, both a journey for you as the host and a journey for your listeners as your audience. And that means your podcast should go on a journey too. I'm not going to belabor the point on this episode, but your podcast is a living, evolving thing. And that may mean the format changes over time. And it also might mean that the name of it changes over time. Yes, just like I said in the tease for today on the last episode, you can change the name of your show. Now, I don't recommend doing it often, but it can be done. And if as your show evolves, you realize a different name would fit it better, it's not only okay to change it, but it probably would be a good move because it'll make it more identifiable as to what it actually is. And similarly, that also means that you don't have to worry about your name being absolutely perfect when you start. So please, please, please don't fret on that too much. In fact, I changed the name of this show (laughs) from Business in the Bedroom to Podcasting Your Brand as it evolved. So this show is a great real life example. And as you may recall from episode 32, I shared a quick sizzle reel of clips from recent times that I've been invited as a guest on other podcaster shows. And I said that we were going to be revisiting those clips on future episodes. So this is one of those episodes. And here's one of those clips from episode 32. And this one is from my friend Kat Corchado's show, Sisters in Service, a podcast that gives women veterans the platform to talk with her about the issues they face. Now, I am not a veteran. I, I bow down and praise 
all veterans, but I am not a veteran. But I was an EMT in college, and she said that that counted. So there we went. We got together and recorded her episode back on December 16th. She called the episode Live, Love, Laugh, and Zombies. (laughs) And so I'll close out today with this clip because... I began by sharing a little on my own journey into discovering my passion for podcasting and then explain how that led to giving this show its original name, Business in the Bedroom. So it will illustrate for you how this evolution happened for me. One of my favorite things is naming a podcast. When you know, I, I, I have a lot of clients and stuff and I have Florida Podcast Network, so I create some shows from scratch. And that's always my favorite part is naming of a show. So when I decided to start my own solo show, it's the first of my own, completely my own show, no co-hosts in a very, very, very long time. My very, very first show was called Curve the Cube. And it was me interviewing other people who are doing what they love for a living and wanting to find out how they got there, you know, what, what was their journey like and how they made it. And I learned a lot. And over the course of that show, realized that podcasting was what I wanted to do for a living. And I fell in love with it. And it became my own story. I didn't expect it to, but it did. So then fast forward so many years, and I've now a fully independent podcasting full time. I have a team, da, 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 all these things. I really felt the pull to get back on the microphone and now share everything that I learned mm-hmm. and help other people. At the end of the day, that's my entire life's mission is to help other people pursue their dreams for a living. And so I figured, let me get this show out there. And I called it Business in the Bedroom because <laughs> that's how I started my business. It was in right. the bedroom. So even though it might get you to think of something else, <laughs> beat and switch, y'all. <laughs> okay. So- <laughs> that's, I'm sorry. That's where my head went. Beat and switch. Saying. But what's funny is when somebody is a side hustler and is trying, you know, has their nine to five and they're trying to build something, they're often and doing it from their bedroom, you know? Right. And so that's who it's speaking to. And when they see it, they immediately know. I've had so many people say, oh my gosh, that's me. Yes, that's me. <laughs> so it's a practical guide for the newbie entrepreneur and it's called mm-hmm. Business in the Bedroom. So you have heard me now mention my other show, which is currently in launch mode, The Owl Podcast, filled with two W's and two L's. But did you know that I also co-host another other podcast? Well, I do. I've had the honor of co-hosting the PodFest podcast since it debuted October 10th, 2021, with my dear friend, Glenn the Geek Hubert, founder of the Horse Radio Network. So today... As this episode of Podcasting Your Brand is releasing on October 10th, 2022, we are celebrating the one-year anniversary of the PodFest podcast. Woohoo! I'm so excited. So PodFest podcast is the official show from PodFest Multimedia Expo. It's the largest podcasting conference for independent podcasters in the United States, founded by Chris Kermissos. I call it my annual mecca. I can't wait. It's coming up in January. I'm so excited. But each episode of the PodFest podcast is like a mini PodFest conference experience filled with lessons from past PodFest speakers, some of the best in the industry. So we celebrate this anniversary of the PodFest podcast today with our entire PodFest community. And if you aren't yet part of it, we'd love for you to join in on the fun. Episode 24 of the PodFest podcast also released today. So come celebrate with us. Head over to PodFestPodcast.com for those episodes, podcasting tips, and community. That's PodFestPodcast.com. And I'll put a link in the show notes for you as well. Happy anniversary to my co-host. Glenn the Geek. Now, remember how I mentioned keywords way earlier in this episode? Well, keywords are very important for what I'll be focusing on with you next, marketing and audience growth. And in episode 57, I'll talk about where keywords really come in handy, search engine optimization. I was a website designer and developer and also a data analyst and SEO writer in my past lives. And those skill sets often converged at an intersection called SEO. And I've applied those skills greatly over the years to boost discoverability of my brands and podcasts. So I'll talk about SEO and how to make it work for your podcast on the next episode, as this episode was a lead-in for where we are headed next, discussions on marketing and audience growth. So if you're not yet subscribed, be sure you do. 
And you can meet me on the OWL app, also spelled with two W's and two L's for a one-on-one coaching call about your podcasting questions. But until then, I have a whole host of free tips for you on my website. Just check out flintstonemedia.com slash free tips. And thank you again to Kat Corchado of Sisters in Service for giving me permission to include her clip here today. Check her links in the show notes. Thanks for tuning into Podcasting Your Brand. In this chapter of the show, I'm revealing how you can harness the power of podcasting to expand your brand. So come and pick up what I've been putting down since 2014. Avoid common mistakes and propel your podcasting and branding forward. And if you have questions or are interested in becoming a sponsoring brand of this show, don't be shy. Reach out to me at Jemmy, spelled J-A-I-M-E, at flintstonemedia.com. It's producer Jemmy signing off for now. Remember... The only thing more powerful than your voice is your spirit to use it. So turn that mic on. <laughs>